Hello, welcome to the short lecture on the applications of probability distributions to project cost and schedule management. My name is Jacques Alexis. I'm a faculty here in the leadership and project management domain, NCPS. We know projects are risky ventures. That is when we initiate a project, the output, and the outcome of the project are uncertain. So we ask project managers to speak in probabilistic terms. What do we mean by that? To understand what we mean, we have to explain the basic idea or the basic concepts of probability and probability distribution. So what is a probability? From a risk management perspective, you can say that a probability is a measure of how likely a risk event or a risk condition may occur. The probability of an event or conditions occurring will take values from zero to one or from zero percent to 100%. What do we mean by that? If the probability of an event occurring is zero, you can say that the event will never occur. If the probability of an event occurring is one or 100%, then you can say that the event will definitely occur. On the other hand, if the probability of an event occurring is between zero or zero percent and one or 100 percent, then you can say that the event may or may not occur. So how do we express this in mathematical terms? You can say that the probability P of any one event E occurring is the number of possible ways it can occur, that's NE, divided by the total number of possible events relating to that one event N. From a project management perspective, how do we explain this? If you say, for example, there is a risk that my supplier may be late um, delivering a part to me. Now, people may ask, what is the probability of the, your supplier being late? So the way to find this probability or to calculate it is to take a look at the historical data. So you can take a look at vendor record, for example, if you see, if you've done business with that supplier before um, and they delivered um, parts to you or products to you, let's say 10 times, and you ask yourself, how many times with them or, or of these 10 times that they were late? Uh, if, for example, the vendor or the supplier was late two times of the 10 times delivered part to you, you can say that there is a 20% chance that the vendor will be late. Uh, in the future, that probability is actually a, a frequency. You can say that the objective probability of this particular this event is the expected frequency that the event occurs, the supplier being late. That's what we call an objective probability based on historical data. What about probability distribution? Let's uh, talk about this. So to begin with, we need to understand what is a probability distribution. A probability distribution is a function that associates the probability with the possible outcome of a random variable. Another way to say it is a way of associating probabilities to possible outcomes over random variable. In a project schedule, 
for example, you can consider activities as random variable if you were performing um, a simulation. So let's take a look at activity A, for example. If you take a look at activity A and you want to model uncertainty in your project plan, instead of providing a most likely value, you can provide three points estimate. So for activity A, you can say possible directions. It may take 21 days. It's most likely will take um, 70 days or maximum or an optimistic or pessimistic estimate is uh, 96 days. So a probability distribution is about associating a probability with each possible outcome. What we have to do here is that there, there, there are um, many possible durations between the minimum and the maximum. And you can always run a simulations to find the probability associated uh, with uh, every possible durations. And we're going to talk about that um, before the end of this short lecture. So the most common probability distributions in project cost and schedule management are the triangle distribution and the beta put distribution. Later, we're going to talk about the difference between the two. But these are the most common distribution, and we're going to cover them in the next slides. So um, the triangular distribution is commonly used to model the durations of a project activity. It, is a, it provides simple sets of parameters. This relates really to, to real life when we take a look at uh, the project duration. Uh, this distribution requires a minimum, a maximum, and a most likely duration. So if you have three point estimates, then you can use this. Now, this distribution is often, often skewed to the left, but it can also be skewed to the right. Now, this skewness means what? It means that task cannot physically be completed in less than a certain duration, apart from a milestone which has zero durations, which is not a real task in a project. Every activity in the project will take certain time. Uh, tasks also can be delayed for a number of reasons. So this link to the minimum durations being closer to the most likely uh, than the maximum duration. And the average or the mean value for the triangular distribution is calculated using a simple average. It is the minimum plus the most likely number plus the maximum divided by three. Now, you may ask yourself, what, what is the difference? between the triangular distribution and the probability distribution. Remember here we have three um, duration. So I'm going to move this so you can see properly. Um, for the, the first one, the first curve skewed to, to the left, we have uh, possible durations, 21 days, 70 and 96. And the second one, we have four days, nine days and, and 30. So that's what you, you have here, minimum, most likely, and maximum durations. Um, so in this graph, you can see probability is plotted on the vertical axis and possible duration will be plotted on the horizontal axis. Now keep that in mind, and we're going to talk about the difference between the triangular distribution and the beta pet distributions. So, the beta pet distribution uses the same parameters as the triangular distribution, minimum or most likely, and the maximum durations. The key difference here is that using the beta pet distribution suggests a greater confidence in the most likely duration. This is why when you calculate an average for the beta pet distributions, you use a weighted average. The weighted average here is, as you can see from the left of my screen, is 
the minimum plus four times the most likely duration plus the maximum uh, duration divided by six. So that's what we call a uh, weighted average. Now, the very thin tails of the um, beta pet distributions uh, means that um, those extreme values are not likely to occur. As you can see, if you take a look at probability in the vertical axis here, let's take a look at my second curve or this curve, uh, it is near zero uh, in terms of probability for this duration to occur. So probably one of the reasons you have um, more confidence in the most likely it represents the shape of your estimates. So um, in other distributions that I'd like to talk about before we uh, move to a concrete example is the uniform distributions. Now, distribution is not as popular as the triangular distributions and the best output distributions. However, you can also use it uh, to model uncertainty in your project course and duration. Uh, in this case, you only have a mean and a max, and the chance of um, hitting any durations or costs between the mean and the map, max will be equally likely. For, for example, here you can see the mean, pro the probability for the mean is 10%, the probability for the max is 10%. Uh, and so is the probability for any of this duration. And in terms of cost, that would be uh, actually the same. So that's one thing to keep in mind when, if you want to use a uniform distribution, so you need a minimum and a maximum, and there is no most likely estimate. So I'd actually like to give you an example of how that worked uh, in practice. So let me put this up here. Um, this is the uh, distribution graph for uh, a power plant project. Um, we um, uh, simulate the completion date of the project uh, to find the probability of completing the project now uh, on a certain date. So um, the division graph of the possible completion dates of power plant project is shown here, an associated probability. Now the, the dates are, um, as I said before, are reported on the horizontal axis and we have frequency here or probability. Um, uh, on the vertical axis. Now, uh, if you take it on my right, this is a mirror of what you see here on the left axis. So we iterated the completion date of the project uh, a thousand times. And um, during the simulations, here's what we found. We found that there is only a 2% chance of completing the project by April 1st. But guess what? The sponsor of the project would like this project to be completed on April 1st. But um, based on the simulations, uh, iterations of um, the completion of the project, we know that there is only 2% chance for this to occur. So what can you do? Now take a look at the 50% chance that October 10, and the 80% chance is December 26. Then it is a way to tell um, the distribution graph or the probability distributions, you know, provides you with the opportunity to negotiate with your sponsor. Saying, well, I know you want this project on April 1st, but the chance uh, for the project team to complete this project is very slim. So it is more likely that this project will end um, after Christmas. <laughs> so uh, perhaps if the sponsors, you know, uh, you can't make trade off, if the sponsor want to um, expedite the duration of the project, then they can certainly um, um, uh, increase the, the, the budget uh, so you can have more resources to complete it. So this is the end of the short lecture on the applications of probability distribution. Um, and project costs and schedule management. So for costs, remember cost management, this is going to be the same. So instead of a completion date here, you'll have possible, uh, different possible costs of the project. 
and associated probability. So that's this is the idea of uh, probability descriptions, really a sample, um, a very simple concept. So that's going to be the end. Uh, so watch for the next uh, video. We're going to publish um, uh, a video every um, month or, or, or every other week or so. So thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.